modular suspension knuckle or upright, some detail. So here's the stock knuckle, and here's the replacement with the hub in. The hub would sit right in here with the bearing. This aluminum plate version is significantly lighter and less expensive to make, and it's modular. So the connections on here are normally, you'd have McPherson strut gripping here and a pivot here, so it can turn, right? Well, we have a hole in the top and the bottom, in fact, three holes, which let us adjust caster for the upright to pivot upon. Also, that's a module, so this is not tightened down. But you can swap this with any other type of uh, piece without changing the entire knuckle. So you could have an integrated bearing if you wanted to, or use it like we are now with nylon or Delron washers uh, for a very inexpensive pivot that, that stands up to the weight of the knuckle. Then you have your steering arm, which turns the knuckle. Well, in our case, that's a plate that sits in here and attaches, bolting with these two bolts to turn. With this, we're set on the Ackerman angle that Honda decided for the 2006 Honda Civic. Here, we can adjust both steering arm length and angle so we can adjust our Ackerman. In fact, we can even set up variable Ackerman, which is something we've been wanting to test for a while, for various speeds for optimal efficiency of the drivetrain patch. Now, caster angle. Typically, this would lean back if this is the front of the car, if we're driving this way. What that means is the line on which it rotates, if the wheel's on this thing, here's the friction patch, the contact patch of the tire. Here's the, uh, the line at which we rotate. If the friction patch is behind the rotation line, just like casters on the front of a shopping cart, it will re-straighten as it drives. Well, we could angle this whole thing back. Right? That's the way a car typically does it. That's the way Honda does it. That's the way it's typically done. This has about 7 degrees of caster in the 2006 Honda Civic. But then, everything we bolt it to is at an angle, or we've got a part, a bracket, that has off-angle bolt patterns that's then specific to that angle. So what we're trying instead, and we, we're, we're attempting it now, is putting our pivot further forward. So the part is directly straight up and down, but its pivot point is still ahead of the tire contact patch. So we have static caster without an angle lane, without, uh, uh, without a caster angle, we still have a gap between the, where the steering point intersects the ground and the friction patch of the tire. We'll see how it works. Modularity lets us run these tests very inexpensively and change very inexpensively. We don't have to recast a new part, which again is expensive. Um, there's, oh, then these two holes, these Mickey Mouse ears, hold the caliper on, which break onto the rotor to stop the car. You notice this doesn't have those at all, but it has this stack of plates. One of these plates will have Mickey Mouse ears on it to hold that caliper on, the caliper mount, and we can then adjust the height and adjust the shape of those mounts so that we can attach any type of caliper on our car now by having that modular caliper plate. Whereas again, you'd have to cast a new part. So that's the modularity inside the stack of parts that can all be made on this home-built router that costs $2,700 or be made very easily because they're all 2D operations on a machine. If you were very precise, you could make them with a home milling machine or, uh, if you're very careful, a benchtop uh, uh, drill press.